She is a real leader that listens and knows how to bring people together. She has brought this department together like never before. And I am so excited to be swearing in the next chief of the San Francisco Fire Department. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Janine Nicholson. I grew up a total tomboy, an athlete. I loved a good crisis. I loved a good challenge. I grew up across the street from a fire station, and my dad used to take me there to vote. I never saw any female firefighters because there weren't any back in the 70s. So I didn't know that I could be a firefighter. And so when I moved to San Francisco in 1990, really some things opened up for me. I saw women doing things that they hadn't necessarily been doing when I was growing up. And one of those things was firefighting. A woman uh, recruited me at the Gay Pride Parade. It was 1991, and she is still a mentor and a friend today and, and a chief in the department. And it was just a perfect fit. I like using my brain, I like using my body, I like working as a team, I like figuring things out, troubleshooting and, and coming up with different ways to solve a problem. Now, in terms of uh, coming in after another female chief, I don't think anybody ever says that about men in their positions. Like, oh, you're coming in after another man chief. What's that like? And I understand why the question is asked, because it's unusual to have a woman in this position. And so I think San Francisco is really a trailblazer in that way, in terms of showing the world what can happen and what uh, other people who may not look like what you think a fire chief should look like, how they can be successful. And people have asked me that also about being the first LGBTQ. I understand I have a responsibility because there are little girls, little queer kids, young women, whatever, that see me and go, oh, well, maybe that's a possibility. I worked my way up within the department. You know, I came in in January of 1994. And so I built relationships over the years. And I spent 24 years in the field, as we call it, you know, working out of firehouses. The fire department is a family. We live together. We eat together. We sleep in the same dorm together. We go to crazy calls together. We go to dangerous calls. And we have to look out for one another. When I was burned in a, in a fire years ago, and I felt responsible, I felt awful, I didn't want to talk to any of my civilian friends because they couldn't understand what I was going through. But all these firefighters knew. They understood, they knew, they've been there. It's a different relationship. We have to trust one another, we have to rely on one another. In terms of now me being the chief of the department, I am really trying to maintain an open relationship with all of our members in the field. So myself and my deputy chiefs, uh, Chief Worsh and Chief Fellow. One of the priorities I had was I want each of us to go around to different fire stations, make sure we hit all within uh, you know, the first three or four months to start a conversation, because I think that hasn't been there uh, for a while. I think part of the reason that I'm getting along well with the field now is because I was there, I worked there, and people know me. And because I know what we need, I know what they need to be successful. I've known Jenny Nicholson since we worked together at Station 15. So I've seen her work firsthand and I have always held her in the highest regard. Since she's become the chief, she's infused the department with optimism. She is very easy to approach and she's concerned with the needs of the EMTs, paramedics and firefighters. I'm especially appreciative that she is concerned with the issues relevant to the fire department today. There's a retired captain uh, named Tony Stefani who started the San Francisco Firefighters Cancer Prevention Foundation over 10 years ago because he himself had cancer and he noticed a lot of people in his fire station, fellow firefighters were getting cancer. And so he really started looking into it. And then lo and behold, in 2012, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And some of my fellow firefighters noticed that there were a lot of uh, women in the San Francisco Fire Department 
premenopausal women in their 40s getting breast cancer, which was really unusual. We were getting it at a higher rate, certainly than the, the general population. We were working with workers' comp to make it flow more easily for our members so that they didn't have to worry about all this paperwork when they're going through chemo or when they're having uh, surgery and the like. Number one, our turnout gear, the gear that we wear into fires, was getting covered with soot. When I came in, it was a badge of honor to have that stuff all over your coat, on your face, your helmet, you know. The dirtier you were, the harder you had worked. But then we started finding out that that stuff is actually toxic and can cause cancer. It's a hormone disruptor, all the chemicals in the soot because it's not just wood and paper that's burning anymore. There's plastic everywhere. So we really had to figure out um, a way to reduce our exposure. We started washing our gear more often. We didn't take our gear into where we were eating or where we were sleeping, which we had done in the past. We started decontaminating ourselves at the fire scene after the fire was out. And then going back to the fire station and taking a shower. I've taught, worked on our decontamination policy, making sure that that gets through. To me, it's not if, it's not when, it's who's gonna be the next person. I've likened it to a cancer sniper. There's a cancer sniper out there, who's gonna get it next? One of the things I love about the fire department is that it is always a team effort. You are my family. I love this city and this department, and I love being of service. I vow to work hard to continue to carry out the mission and vision of the San Francisco Fire Department and to keep moving us forward in a positive way. So if I were to give a little morsel of advice to women, to young queer kids, whatever, find people that can support you, find people that you can look up to, keep putting one foot in front of the other and doing your best every day. Keep trying, you never know what door is gonna open next. You really don't.